Hi, this is Matrix Transformations. We're going to take a cartoon character and we're going to transform it. And we're going to move it around, rotate it, do a lot of different things. You're going to play around though mostly and figure out what type of matrix will transform or you know put different values in. You're going to figure it out for yourselves. So I'm going to take Scooby-Doo and I'm going to mark him with a bunch of points and put it into Logger Pro. We used to do this with graph paper and put it over the figure, but we can also do it with Logger Pro a lot easier and a lot more accurate. So I already have my picture, and so I'm gonna go under Insert, and I'm gonna go Picture, and I'm gonna do Picture with Photo Analysis. This is in Logger Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that picture. Here's my Scooby-Doo. There he is. Oh, sorry. Okay, so there's Scooby-Doo. So what we wanna do is place him Right about here. Now what will happen though is that this thing will move around somewhat. So we got to be careful and make sure that you are in the first quadrant when you're placing this stuff. So I made it a little bit bigger just by dragging the corner and then I'm going to set the origin. So this right here sets the origin otherwise it seems to pop into uh, the negative or the fourth quadrant quite a bit. So I'm going to take a little liberty there and show it there. So that is going to be my origin. That's going to mean that everything's going to be in the first quadrant. Then I'm going to hit this little red button here and add a point. And so I'm just going to go and fairly accurately, I'm going to click a point. And then we're playing dot to dot. So you got to keep that in mind when you're making this because if you go all over the place, it's not going to look, out, it's not going to look very good. You're going to go dot to dot and then you're going to add the eyes and other features later. And since we're doing a smooth, uh, we're going to do a smooth uh, scatter plot with this on Excel. It will turn out pretty good if we end up marking these fairly far away. You can get them really close. A lot of great accuracy with that. I'm kind of off the page here, so the ear is going to get cut off. But this is what we're going to end up with. So I'm going to go around the figure and do that. So I have the outline now, and they show up in the background here. Doesn't look like much, and here are all the coordinate points that we do have. Now, since I have the outline, what I want to do is I want to go to the bottom here and figure out how far down I've gone. So if you can see this, this is 59 points. Some people do thousands of points, so it depends upon what, what time you have. But I'm at 59, so I'm going to write that number down because I need to make a space there later on because now I want to maybe go in and make his teeth or make his eyeballs. And on the spreadsheet, everything connects. And so if I start doing the mouth right now, this was the last point that I put. And what will happen is that it will play dot to dot. And so then I'll get all these funny lines that I don't want. So I'll do the mouth, dot to dot, uh, nope. So you mark down and write down all the cells that that occurs at, then you know that you can put a space in there. So documenting your points is pretty important. So I just did the eyeballs here and I write down 59 and then I write down the other numbers that I need. I'm not going to show you that. You can take care of that bookkeeping though. So now I'm going to highlight all these points and I'm going to copy them. So once you get your figure done and you're satisfied with what you have, copy and now we're going to paste it into Excel. So that's step two. So I just click in my Excel, click a point uh, here, A1 is a great place to start. And I'm going to just paste and that's the wrong thing to paste. And then I paste those points in. So those are all the points that I do have. So now I went down to 59 and you got all those places. I would start at the very bottom, whatever your bottom one is, because you move things down and then all the cells stay the same. So for instance, maybe I had one here. I can click on this cell right here and I can just go insert. It doesn't show up on your video there, but I can insert a row in Excel. So there's my space. Now I go up to the next one, and why you start at the bottom is because then the integrity of the points all stayed the same. So here I got, uh, you can't see it, I gotta pull it over a little bit, sorry. There's the 59 that I was looking at for the other eyeball, and I wanna go in here and then just insert a row. Now I have a previous video where I took this, this column, uh, column of points, these are all x, y coordinates, and I multiplied it by a two by two. Transformations in the mathematical world work, work a little bit differently. 
we're going to take the 2 by 2 and multiply it by all these points. In order to do that, I can't have a uh, 74 by 2 matrix. I need a 2 by 74 matrix. So I have to transpose all this material. So I'm going to click on that cell, go all the way to the bottom, and then press Shift and click that one, and now I'm highlighted. So I'm going to copy, and now what I want to do is paste this. So I'm going to get a new sheet. So I'm going to go plus here. I got a new sheet, and then I'm going to paste special. Now watch how this works. I want to paste with a transpose. So when I do this, make sure that A1 is highlighted or some cell is highlighted where you want it, but you want to do the transpose so that when I paste it, it goes all across like that. Beautiful. And now I got this little thing right down here. Hopefully you can do this. This is just going to make another window for me. So when I set everything up, I can see my picture here. And I can see my matrices, what I'm multiplying by, no problem. So now I want to set up my 2 by 2 matrix. I'm going to put it here uh, in the 5. And so then that matrix, so we already did step 3, transpose the coordinates. Then we want to multiply by the transform T of X is equal to A times X. This is going to be our square matrix. What matrix do we want? Well, we want a 2 by 2. So we want a 2 by 2 which is our transpose matrix A, multiplied by our 2 by N, whatever N you have for points, and that's going to be equal to a 2 by N matrix as well. We're going to string this out so we get it all on one picture. You can also do it on two pictures, but we're going to do it one. Here's the rotational matrix that we want to use. I'm going to start with pi over 4, and then you can do it with a different angle measurement whenever you want. So here's how we have to write it. Cosine and pi, you have to put in these two brackets next to each other and then divide by 4 and end the bracket. So that's going to be the cosine, and I'm going to put in here negative sign. So equal sign, don't forget the equal sign, negative sign of pi divided by 4. And close off the parentheses, and then do cosine, I'm sorry, do sine here and then cosine there. So there's my rotational matrix right there. So this will rotate it in a counterclockwise direction by pi over 4. So let's see how this all sets up. So wherever my last values are, I'm going to click over on this pane over here and slide all the way over to the right. And then I'm going to leave a gap in here so it doesn't get played dot to dot and connect all the points. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this matrix here and I'm going to multiply it by this matrix here. But really, I'm just going to do this vector first and then fill right and everything should work as long as we fix these things in. So what we'll do is we'll go equals and then I'm going to take this cell and it might slip over, I don't know, but and I'm going to go times this cell, so it's just matrix multiplication, plus this cell times this value here. So we're going down on the right uh, matrix that we do have. Now, one thing is that we're always going to use this rotational matrix. So I want to put a dollar sign in for these values, but not all of them, because I want this A1 and A2 to shift as we go along. So when I use these, this vector here, I'm going to multiply by B1, B2, so on. But the dollar sign always keeps me using this matrix here. So that's what I'm doing for that. So I'm going to hit Enter on. So once you've entered it, either hit this green check or, oh, I got a problem. I just had an extra plus sign in here. So now I'm going to go this cell. And so now I'm going to take the second row here. So I'm going to take and say equal to, click on this one, and I'm going to go times this one again, plus this next one, and then times. So I'm just doing matrix multiplication here. And so then I got to put the dollar signs in on these A's here and this B here. So that should set me up. Then I'm just going to take these and grab them and slide them over. So you highlight this and then you got your little handlebar there. And then what we should do is just slide this. Let's just see that it works. Looks like it worked because we slid over to B. So I'm going to grab this and go. Okay, then just keep on going. 
you're going to have to go out as far as what your coordinates tell you to do. If you put a marker in there, sometimes you might want to just put a fake coordinate in there, like a thousand, a thousand, so you can look for it easy. But I'm just going to go out for quite a ways. And then I need to go control squiggle. And then I'm back to my values. Here's a zero, zero. So that would be where I had a gap. So I have to eliminate those in order to graph this. So now I'm going to highlight all this data and then I'm going to insert a picture. I want to do a, and I want to do a scatter. So I want to go and make sure I'm highlighted. Oh, I just de-highlighted, highlighted again. On the split screen, it isn't so bad. So you just click here and then you press the shift again and then you can go out to wherever you want. Then I'm going to go to the charts and I'm going to go scatter the, one I want is the smooth lined scatter, and that will play dot to dot with me and it will be nice and smooth. So let's see what happens. So there's my Scooby-Doo. Notice I didn't put a gap in here for the eyeball, and so I connected to there and there. That's why you have to do very good record keeping. Now this didn't go out as far as I want, so what I do is, if, as long as this is highlighted, I can go and find this little, uh, I don't know what to call it, but that shape to grab this purple and blue and go out further to a lot more points. And so now I look at my Scooby-Doo, where Scooby-Doo, where are you? And so I go out here on this pane and it's nice to have this whole thing, if you can click it and drag it, it's nice to have it all the way over here to the left. So I found it here on the right, and so I'm going to make sure I'm all the way over to the left on the left pane, and I'm gonna to try to click and drag this over, and there it is. So it should be in this pane, then you can see what's going on. If you can see my shape, I'm rotating it by 45 degrees or pi over four. So this does work for me. My figure is kind of hideous because I have that connected, so I'll have to see if I can fix that with the data. Now the other things that you want to do though is play around with this matrix. So I can change this value to a one. What happens? Oh, that kind of distorts it maybe a little bit. So I got a zero and maybe I got a zero and a negative one. So once you get your drawing really well done, you can go ahead and change this matrix. Now it looks like I just reflected over the X axis. So I want you to try to classify many different ways to represent this and put in your own numbers and i got some guidelines for you over here uh, what we can use so you can do various reflections contractions or exp expansion or shearing matrices try to play with different values in the types of matrices below well what do i have well that's the one that i just did that did a reflection so play around with changing this number not this number changing both numbers what does it do classify what's going on and then here put some value into here. This one, leave out the values, see what happens to Scooby-Doo. And then this one, put a three instead of having one and one. Try whatever you want, so make sure that you do an extension with this as well. So I'm cleaning up that eyeball, if my gap was in the wrong spot, that's what I had to do. This one goes to zero, zero, so I gotta find out where that problem is. This is one thing that came up, it might be a zero, zero, or else it might be this thing here. So I just want to go ahead and cut this and get rid of this. And then that seemed to cure another problem. So I still have a few other problems that I do have. So I ended up with a fault here because I didn't keep track of my eyeballs. So you're gonna to have to make sure that you do keep track of your eyeballs. Your picture should look a lot better than this too. I'm gonna to be amazed at what you guys can find. So get in there, try this and try different forms. Oh, there's the identity matrix. Oh, that works out good. But if I put a three in here, what happens? Oh, Scooby. Scooby, what happened to you? Scooby, where are you? Okay, that's enough of that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and you're gonna make your uh, cartoon character look good and put this transformation in there with matrix multiplication. And this will be our transform matrix that we do use which our book does call A, T of X is equal to A times X. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. And I would take screenshots of each one of these pictures too when you go play around with it so that you have all of them so you can uh, process it and put it in a nice display.
Okay, there you go. Have a nice day.